This is my attempt at charting a pattern of holes from a historic piece. I looked at a photograph of the Langberg bra with sprung. The photo is by Beatrix Nutz of the University of Innsbruck Institute for Archaeology and I found it on the website MedievalHistories.com. It is a piece that was taken from a castle in Austria and it's been dated to the 15th century. Um, what was shown in the photo roughly corresponds to the area within this blue line. And if you look at the photo, the fabric was a little bit scrunched up, so this hole actually appears. It kind of goes like that. This is my best representation that I could do. Um, so I put in this large diamond that has a double outline of holes on it. I extended those lines. I fiddled around with the clovers in the center of that diamond and found that they fell in this position relative to each other. This line of the double outline diamond continued and became a small diamond here and then this double line continued up so I extended it over here. You can see that I've chosen to use Collingwood's charting method which for every hole there is a vertical line inside the square of the graph paper. He also puts a dot in every square whose threads are simply interlinked and not involved in the multiple thread interlinking of the hole and I do have a video of how to make a hole with multiple thread interlinking. I also have a um, video of this clover pattern and this chart will probably make more sense if you have a look at that to see exactly what the threads are doing. But this is a graph representation of a sprung pattern and uh, I found that it um, it worked out when I extrapolated it, when I extended it, it just absolutely fit. And I wanted to say that the symmetry for this diamond and also the balance between positive and negative space within this diamond are very characteristic of sprung patterns. You can see that there's plain interlinking here and then there's holes and nowhere in this area is there a big gap of one or the other. It's all balanced, so that's a positive and negative um, space balance. Up here, in here, over here, you don't find that same balance of positive and negative space, and that kind of confused me, and I've been thinking of how if you were going to make something inspired by the pattern of the Langberg bra with sprung, how you would actually do that. Uh, I guess that's another video, but um, just for now this is my attempt to chart uh, the historic piece. So I hope you can see how I've done that and when you're thinking of translating this into an actual piece of sprung, in Collingwood's notation every square represents a plate row. The over plate row is not shown, so you would have this is, um, say this is row one, then this would be row three. And row two is just implied, um, and you would repeat row one and row two, making holes at the appropriate places. Um, when you're talking about the actual warp strands, every square represents two warp strands. And up here I've labeled the columns one, two, three, four, five, six. Just arbitrarily starting at this point, um, that would be something to consider when you uh, try to lay out a, a chart on a warp where you would actually start, but where you would end, you take that number, multiply by 2, and say if you had 25, there's actually more, but if you had 25 squares across, then you multiply by 2 and then add 2 to allow for the two strands on either side um, that are needed and that will give you an idea of how many warp threads to put on your loom before making this piece of sprung. Um, at this point I don't know that I would actually make this 
but it was a good exercise to see that I could chart something from a historical piece and uh, to think about how I might go about making one.